Hello everyone and welcome along to this week's golf show. We're just one week away now from the Masters at Augusta. Cannot wait for that. But first we've got the Valero Texas Open on the PGA Tour to look forward to. And as ever, I'm joined by Simon Dyson, six-time European Tour winner to do just that. Uh, welcome along, Simon. Before we get stuck into life on tour next week and of course recapping last week, today is the day we've all been waiting for. Golf is back. Golf courses are open in the UK and England at least, Simon. And well, we're recording this early on Monday morning, so I imagine you're planning to get out there today. Yeah, it's a beautiful day here as well. So I'm going to get out. Got a couple of lessons booked in today. But, I mean, I was on social media last night and it was going crazy with just people looking forward to playing golf, getting the clubs ready, you know, giving them a clean in the sink, the grips, things like that. It's, uh, it's great that we can finally get back out and get back to a little bit of normality for the golfers anyway. Hey, what's it been like at your club? Because I imagine getting a tea time has been pretty difficult. Yeah, I think they've literally left it open to just members for now. Um, I was down there about 10 days ago, helping clear the range, get it all, get it all looking good and ready for obviously today. So it, it looks good. It looks in good condition. They've done all the bunkers, they've done the greens. So looking forward to getting out there this afternoon. Yeah, I imagine it's going to take a while, some of these rounds, and there'll be some pretty shocking ones in there as well. A few shanks. It, you're going to need to be patient today, aren't you, with the game? Very patient. It's a lot of, lot of acceptance today, a lot of people need. And do you know what? I think, I think there will be, because people will just be so happy to be back on the golf course. But it's when you're two months into playing golf again that the old habits start to creep in. So I think the key is just appreciate how nice it is to be playing because we haven't been able to for so long. Yeah, I don't know what it's like for the pros, but it's funny for us amateurs because sometimes you don't play for six months and you pick up a club, you've played the best you've played in years. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, for me, that's all about expectation. So your expectation levels are pretty low. And when your expectation levels are low, your acceptance is really high. So it's all about just keeping keeping that going I think um but yeah it's amazing it's like riding a bike everyone always thinks they need to tweak something but they've already got it and you know the the swing is embedded in them yeah and if you have a bad day there's always one shot isn't there one drive that makes you come back so I'm sure always. players will experience that today <laughs> yeah I'm sure they will they'll hit that one shot I always say to people that's the beauty of golf you could play 17 terrible holes and then you step up on 18, flush it down the middle, hit a six iron to 10 foot and hole it. And that is what makes you want to come back and play again. Yeah, I can't wait to experience that. Once again, it's been a long wait. And uh, we're hoping to go out on the links later this week, aren't we, to plan ahead of Augusta and film you. Hopefully you've still got it. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of practice these next three days for that filming on Thursday. But yeah, looking forward to that. It's... Um, It'll be a nice day. We'll get some good good filming done and prepare for the Masters next week. Yeah, cannot wait for that to get underway. Right, let's get to last week's event, shall we? The big one it was the WGC match play in Texas and a win for Billy Horschel over Scotty Scheffler in the final last night. And he's a player that I know you like, Simon. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Billy Horschel's, to be fair. He goes about everything correctly. I follow him on social media and he works so hard. So you can never begrudge anybody who works productively and hard and has success. So he obviously won the FedEx years ago, but this is, this is a big step for him to win a world event. Yeah, he's got a good pedigree, hasn't he? You mentioned the FedEx Cup that he won years ago. He's, I think, a six-time winner now on the PGA Tour, but he's never been on a Ryder Cup team before. So this is good timing, isn't it? He's got a big chance now to make the team later this year. Great timing for him. You know, that again, that will be one of his goals. You know, when he won that FedEx, he will set goals to win a major, win a world event and play in the Ryder Cup. And he's ticked one of those off and he's got a, a lot closer to the Ryder Cup as well. So if he plays that, his, his last goal will be to win a major. And do you know what? There's no reason why he can't. You know, he's stepped up and won this big event. So he, that will definitely be the next thing for him to do. And a great week as well for the Europeans, Victor Perez in particular. I know a lot of Europeans got three from the groups, but Victor Perez getting through to the semi-finals, that would have been a big boost to his confidence. Yeah, good player, Victor Perez. Really solid player. He's, he's going to be around a long time. And I think we'll see his name up in lights. 
in big events as well. Okay, and before we move on to this week's event, we have to mention last week's event on the European Tour in Kenya too, because your selection from two weeks ago at the same course, Daniel Van Tonder, uh, shrugged off a missed cut from when you backed him, of course, to win the next week at 45 to 1. I thought you meant who's going to do well these next two weeks. That's why <laughs> it still I counts. I knew, it, I knew he'd do one. I knew he'd win one of the weeks. But yeah, you know, everything when I was you know, profiling him and everything that his form, his record around that course, everything ticked all the boxes for him to do well. And you know what? Fair play to him. You miss a cut and then you come back and win on the same course. Really great effort. And I'm pleased for him because I played with him years ago and really nice kid, really nice kid. Yeah, the clues are that hopefully people who watched that stuck with him for the two weeks. Uh, you said you thought the South Africans would be suited by it with the altitude and they won both events in the end, Harding and Van Tonder. And we mentioned that a player like him might break through. It's his first win on the European Tour. That's his fifth win now, though, in his last 13 starts worldwide. That's really impressive. That shows what good quality golf he's playing. Now, he, obviously, he's got his European Tour card. He needs to carry on with that and not change anything. That's the trouble. A lot of people get on the European tour and think, right, what do I need to change to, be, to succeed on here? He needs to change nothing. He's a clear winner on the European tour now. So just go and keep doing what you're doing and he'll have more success probably. Okay, well, we had the right idea just a week early. So hopefully yeah. we can put that right this week with our event on the PJ Tour. Time, haven't I? Yeah, you have, yeah. A week early. Yeah, so you're getting there. We're getting there. We just need to get the time in that line rightly. Uh, right, just one event on the PJ Tour, the Valero Texas Open. There's no event on the European Tour this week. Uh, but this is an event that we all know. It's been held, I think, since 1922, one of the longest running events on the PJ Tour. Uh, unfortunately, last year, there was no event due to COVID, but we're back and we've got a good feel because it's a week before the Masters, of course. So a lot of top players are playing this to get some prep in. And of course, those who aren't in the Masters, this is a final chance to get in the field by winning it. It is. It's a great event, you know, and they'll probably set the course up like the Masters. They'll have similar green speed, things like that. But it, it looks a really nice course, the Oaks course, uh, TPC San Antonio. Long course, 7,400 plus. Um, but it's designed by Greg Norman and Sergio Garcia, which to me are two of the best ball strikers the game's ever seen. So it shows that that's what they're putting the emphasis on, tee to green. So you're going to have to be really high up on strokes gained, tee to green, approach play, things like that. So, uh, yeah, it should be a really good event. And it's the last chance to qualify for the Masters, like you said. So there'll be a lot of guys who aren't in the Masters who want to do really well this week. Now, you mentioned the tee to green stats. Uh, that's certainly evident when you look at the previous winners of this event. And, well, just looking at the scores as well, it has been tricky in the past due to the wind, hasn't it? It can get windy around here. The last two editions haven't been too bad, but that's something you've got to consider as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, like you said, the scoring's been pretty good the last couple of years. Um, it can get windy up that neck of the woods, but I think the fairways are pretty generous. The greens are pretty generous as well. So um, hit it, get it long off the tee, get yourself in play and really start going at those pins. As I mentioned, this is the last chance to get in the Masters next week. If you're not in already, you need to win this event because the cutoff point to get in via the top 50 in the world rankings has now passed. And a certain Ricky Fowler, Simon, is one of those. If he doesn't win this event, it'll be his first major that he's missed since 2010. I know you're his biggest supporter, so he'll be absolutely desperate to try and do that this week. It'll be a travesty for old Ricky not to be in, the, in a major, especially the Masters. You know, everybody wants to play the Masters. So, But again, you know, somebody like Ricky Fowler, if he doesn't play it, that'll just spur him on to get back in it. You know, I remember it happening to Poulter years ago and look what he did. He, you know, just got his head down and worked hard and, and got back in it. So, um, yeah, but I hope Ricky plays. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to back in this. We'll get to that shortly. Uh, the last time also this was played a couple of years ago, Corey Connors Monday qualified for the event and then won the event to get in the Masters. So the incentive is there, isn't it, for everybody in the field and the players even today trying to get into it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's really impressive to, to qualify for an event and then win it. I think the last person I knew did that was Michael Campbell in the US Open. You know, Monday qualified, not Monday qualified in America, but down in London. And then he went on to win the tournament. But that's really impressive um, for, for somebody so new as well to go and do that. And then all of a sudden, I mean, his life literally changed in a week. Yes, that'll be a big storyline going into this week. And of course, uh, looking ahead to next and the Masters. Right. How many picks have you got this week and who's the first one? I've gone for three picks this week. I've gone for three. Uh, my first one, I've gone for Charlie Hoffman. We're talking about one of those people that need to win to get in the, the Masters. And sometimes I feel like when there's no other option than to win, to qualify for something, it's amazing how many times you see it happen. And I look at his form round here, he won it in 16. He was second last year. He was second in 2011 and he was third in 2012. So, again, there's clearly something about this place that he likes. But, again, like I said, when your back's against the wall and there's only one option, it's amazing how many times it happens. Yeah, I just pulled up his form as well because I know he's, he's been on leaderboards a few times. He wasn't great last week in the Corrales event, but he was 17th at the Players, 10th at Bay Hill, and 7th at Pebble Beach. So, he has been showing some good form this year. He has been showing some good form. So, it's great that... He's showing that form coming into this event where he's done really well and he's won it. And it'd be disappointing if he isn't in because he's always a guaranteed first round leader bet, isn't he, at the Masters? I was just going to say, I mean, <laughs> the amount of times one of my mates used to back him to be leading after the first round and he was always there or thereabouts. Yeah, so hopefully, fingers crossed, he can get into the field and we can all lose our money backing him next week as well. Uh, right, here's the second pick, Simon. I'm going to go with uh, Siwoo Kim. Really like how this lad plays, really do. He's fun, he's a really good player. T to green, it's impressive, and nothing seems to phase him. He keeps level headed, you know. He, he had a top 10 a few weeks ago, and I just like how he plays. And It looks like a course that could really suit his type of game. Yeah, I think he was fourth here the last time we, we had the event a couple of years ago, and you mentioned that yeah. top 10 at the Players' Championship. and. He did win earlier this year, didn't he, to get himself into the Masters. So he'll be in a high knowing that that's to come next week. And this is like a free shot for him. Hopefully he's not just using it to prepare. Hopefully he can get into winning mode once again. Well, you want to kind of, you want to go into the Masters with form and you want to perform well the week before the Masters because then it just gives you that extra bit of boost when you tee it up on Thursday morning. You know, if he missed cuts this week, going to the Masters would be made a little bit more difficult. So he'll want to perform. And like I said, I think the course will really suit his game, especially tee to green. Oh, we've seen plenty of players, haven't we, do well before a major. Notably, Phil Mickelson always comes to mind. He's got a great record winning the week before a major championship. Right, we've got one more then. Who's the last? I'm going to go with the old boy, Cooch. I watched him last week and he was, he was really good up to the semis. Really good ball was on a piece of string. Um, again, very strong tee to green. Great attitude as well. Love his attitude. All three of my picks have got great attitudes. I know I speak about it most weeks as well, but that's why they're successful. Uh, tee to green. He's had two top sevens in the last six years around here. So again, you know, I know it's not as good as Charlie Hoffman's previous form on this course, but it's still good knowing that you're having top sevens around a certain course. Um, and, he, and he is in form, you know, to get to the semi-final last week with that field, you've got to play some good golf. I guess the only concern is you mentioned the old boy. He played seven rounds in five days, yeah. didn't he, last week? Yeah, that's, it's a lot of golf. It's a lot of golf, but, you know, he knows his body better than anybody. He's been around a long time. He knows he'll probably say, right, I'm having, I know this course. I'm going to take two days off, not touch a club, stretch, relax, and then prepare for the tournament like that. Maybe even just walk around the course. 
you see so much more of the course when you walk it and he'll probably get a play the pro-am on the Wednesday, get to see how the greens are reacting. So he'll be ready come Thursday. Yeah, just let his caddy do the work. Hopefully he pays him well. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Had to get in there. Uh, right, good luck to your selections this week. Then the three at the Valero Texas Open. It is, of course, our last week before the Masters. And uh, just looking ahead to Augusta, Simon, I know it's one of your favourite weeks of the year. It is an amazing... It's We said it last time. It's not just an amazing sporting event. It's an amazing world event. You know, the viewing figures they must get for that tournament must be off the charts. And it's just a special place. It's like we said, it's the only major that's played at the same course every year. And you never get sick of watching it. I honestly never get bored of watching that tournament. I love, I love it from the opening tee shot to the last putt. And I'm fortunate enough to have played it a couple of times. And it is, it lived up to all expectations and more, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think the viewing figures will be pretty high won't they, next week because everyone's going to go back out on the course this week, get the bug again, and then yeah. cannot wait to watch the first major of the year. Yeah, very true. Very true. And then they'll probably see like Billy Horschel at a shot the, last week, didn't he? And that uh, everyone can relate to, and they'll probably see a few of those. So it makes them feel a little bit better about their own games. OK, well, just a quick one to whet the appetite in terms of the betting. Uh, we're recording this, as say, early Monday, so we don't have the Texas Open betting, but we do have anti-post betting on the Masters. And Dustin Johnson is the 15-2 to two favourite after his brilliant win there last year, of course. Uh, John Rahm is next to 10-1. to one. Then Justin Thomas and Bryson DeChambeau are at 11s. Roy McIlroy. And then, would you believe, Jordan Spieth now as short as 14-1. to one. I mean, he was a massive price six, 12 months ago for this, but... He's been in great form, hasn't he? And he will be a threat, I'm sure. Uh, anybody in mind at this stage, Simon? Do you know what? You've, you've lit those people that you've named, the, the cream, like I said, the cream always rises to the top. And those people that you've named will not be far away. You know, DJ must be buzzing to have got his first green jacket only a few months ago. So he'll, he'll want to go back to back and who can say he won't? I think Lee Westwood is about 28, 30 to 1 as well. I'm sure there'll be a few people with the form he's shown backing him too. Absolutely. He's been playing great. He's been playing some of the best golf of his career. Um, and, he, and he knows it's given him that resurgence of confidence that he knows he can still cut it, even at you know, 47, 48, whatever he is. But I think he would be probably the most popular winner out of anybody if he won. Yeah. For, the, for the Englishman, anyway. Yeah, that would be great to see. Fingers crossed, right? Cannot wait to hopefully get out on the course this week with Simon and, of course, hopefully uh, give you plenty of insight ahead of the Masters next week. Hopefully we can enjoy that together. And in the meantime, good luck this week, Simon. We, we came close, didn't we, in Kenya, as I say? We're just a week early, so we'll put that right this time. Yeah, we're close. I was, I was, I was close to picking Harding, actually, first week, but I went with Von Tonda instead. Um, but, yeah, we're getting close. Could have pulled the double off. We got the yeah, timing yeah. right. That'd have been good, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right. Well, there's always this week, and we've got three picks, hopefully, that will do well in Texas. Uh, right. So enjoy the golf, then, both on TV and, of course, out on the course if you are playing for the first time in months in England as well. And myself and Simon will be back next week, hopefully, giving you plenty of insight and a few winners at Augusta. Of course, it's just one week away until the Masters. We'll see you soon.